Hey my YouTube friends, what's up? Joe here and doing a quick unboxing and uh, first impressions of the Real Steel Bushcraft. I just got this today and this came along with a, uh, I had a couple things come today uh, there was supposed to be more but two things and it was this and a Uzi Protector watch. Now I was all psyched about the Uzi Protector watch but I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to be bothered with that. I just want to warn you if you look up, if any of you watching this if were thinking about getting an Uzi Protector watch, in my opinion, the thing is a piece of junk. <laughs> I, mean, I, I wasn't even going to bother with a review, but I really, technically, a real reviewer should review stuff that's crap too. And I have done reviews in the past that were something is less than perfect or not that great. But this thing, I was so unhappy when I opened it up, I just put it back in the box and then I'm sending it right back. So keep in mind, if you ever look up Uzi Protector, it's got some kind of tritium thing or whatever. It's just a cheap, I thought it would look nice in the video, but it was cheap watch. But anyway, let's get back to the main event. The Real Steel Bushcraft Knife. Now before I start, uh, I was, this um, Real Steels I'm into, there is one of my guys that, that uh, turned me on to a Real Steel Knife. I wish I could remember which one it was. Uh, it might be Seven Red Eye, I'm not sure. That uh, that did a real steel. I will have to look and put it in a flash on a splash on the screen if I remember. But uh, besides him turning me on to real steel, I'm getting one of those H sixes that are coming in the mail. Probably do an uh, overview on that. Another gentleman that I happened just flipping by, looking at all different real steel uh, knives, is uh, his uh, channel goes by the name of Debar Mountain. Debar D E B A R Mountain. He did a he did a review on this. The only thing is that his is the 2014 version. Mine is the 2015. There's very little subtle differences, but one is a major one, and I'll show it to you in a minute. So here it is. Hope you excuse my babble about that the watch in the beginning, but uh, it's a I think believe Real Steel is a Chinese company. So I have, obviously it's made in China. This is not a, a knockoff or a clone. Oof, so far in that. There you go, bushcraft. Nothing on really on the bottom. Now I did took a I did take a peek at this today, but just a quick peek. So basically, we're really going to be go, going through this together because I wanted to share this with you guys. So here's the box. Let's get everything out of the box. Let's take this out. Some tissue paper. Some instructions are in there. Something to add on to the to the sheath to uh, you know to attach it to your belt, but we're not going to be messing with that right now. So let's put that away. Let's just put this to the side over there, off camera. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit. Now, this is it in the sheath. Before we take it out of the sheath, I just want to show you the sheath a little bit. I forgot what the sheath was made to be honest. I wrote it down and now I can't find my notes that I wrote it down with. So the main thing is about the knife. So let's take it out. But before we even get to the knife, I'll say this. The sheath stays on nice. It's quality. So it's not going anywhere. So let's take it out. Now it's a bushcraft knife. So we all know what, what bushcraft knives are for. But if you've seen any of my videos, you know I'm an animal lover, and I, uh, I'm not obviously not going to be using it for what it should. Be. Well, then again, bushcraft could be used for. Wait a minute, let me get rid of this. Could be used for stuff in the woods, but it also could be used for animals uh, hunting and stuff like that. And that's not what mine's going to be used for. So don't get on my case if I'm saying uh, what bushcraft knives are really for. You got to remember, I don't, I don't own too many. Uh, I don't own too many. Um, Uh, I can't even think of the name of the damn, uh, you know, non-folding knives, I can't think of, fixed blade, that's it. So anyway, let's go show you a little bit of the knife, hopefully, let's show you in the hand. Make sure this thing is focusing. Now one of the major differences between... Make sure you got some more light in here. One of the major differences between the 2014 version and the 2015 is the steel. Because that was driving me crazy. I didn't know. I thought it was going to be 440 steel. As it turns out, I see 
Is it coming in? Yeah, D2 steel. It's like, what the heck? Did I get like some kind of mistake here? There's the real steel. But that's the one of the differences of the um, the 2014 versus the 2015. We'll go over the real quickly the differences. Let me just go over some quick stats. Now, as I just said, the steel is D2. The old the 2014 steel is 440C. Um, the blade is a full full tang, beautiful full tang, as you can see right there. It's 3.5 millimeters thick. Um, the blade length is 4.13 inches long, or 105 millimeters. Now the grind, I think this might be my first, unless one of my condors is, that I never did a video on. Uh, the, 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 the grind is a, a Scandi grind. I think the, what I was trying to say is, I think this might be one of my first Scandi grind uh, knives. There it is in the hand. Now it came with some factory oil. I'm trying to wipe it off, but for some reason, I don't know. It's not coming off. Or it, I mean, it's coming off, but not as nicely as I'd like it to be. For, it's on. It's it's on camera debut. As you can see, well, no, as you can't see. I thought this was my car to handle. Now they're saying it's G10 with a red G10 in, in, inlay. Now, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. McCarter is not G10, correct? I think I did another video of uh, another fixed blade of mine where they were saying about McCarter and G10. I thought, in my, I thought there were two separate different things. I mean, to me, it looks like McCarter to me, but they're saying it's G10. So let's roll with it, G10. Um, and the other uh, difference is the lanyard hole on the 2015 is smaller than the 2014. Why the change in the lanyard hole? I have no idea. To me, you know, it's not that much different from what I saw in the video. I got to admit, again, I know I sound like a broken horse with certain certain things with this. Um, when I saw his video, the knife looked bigger for some reason. Even though he said the numbers and everything, to me it seemed bigger. Um, I haven't cut anything with it, but we're going to try that right now. Let's see. Now, I remember when I saw his video, the thing was slicing and dicing like no problem. Hopefully... Mine will do the same. Let's fade back a little bit. First time cutting on video. I mean, first time cutting on video for this knife. Alright, that looks pretty good. Ready? Let's get this. I would say that this knife is very sharp. Very, very sharp. So, yes. I don't recall what I paid for it. Um, if I remember correctly, um, by the time this video gets posted, I'll put it as a splash on the screen. But I'm going to guess, I, I think, 60-something, uh, maybe? I think the website listed it as 60-something. I like the... I like the inlay. I like the red inlay. It's nice. Feels nice in the hand. It's got this... Hopefully you can catch that. It's got some jimping right here. Feels kind of cool. It is comfortable in the hand. I'd like to see them make a... I mean, I, I shouldn't whine about small knives because I love small knives. But I'd like to see them make this knife... Oh, there you go. That's a nice shot. I'd like to see them make this knife a little bit bigger. Something along the lines of one of the shreds that I have. Not the shred I reviewed. A shred that I should review. I can't think of the number. Now, let's show you against the ruler. I'm going to show you against the uh, another knife. So, yep, yeah, busted out a rule today instead of the dollar. Trying to change it up a little bit. Make sure we get both things on screen so you can see. Line it up. Right there. It's about eight, eight and a half inches. As I mentioned in another video, the Kershaw piston, I've been uh, carrying that a lot lately. So let's put it against that. There's the Kershaw piston. That's what it looks like against that. Great knife. Well, let's just take a quick look around the blade. 
my magnifying glass is going to work all right. I gotta say, if this is my first Scandi grind, I don't, I can't say for sure with all the knives I own, I could have Scandi. I don't realize it. I am digging Scandi grind, very, very sharp. Now, one thing I since I don't, I'm not up on uh, Scandi grinds. How tough is it to maintain? Now I saw they mentioned on the website that it can be easily reprofiled for another grind. So take that with a grain of salt. I'm not into reprofiling knives. I've only just gotten into I've gotten into sharpening this year. Sounds crazy as long as many years as I've been collecting, I'm only getting into sharpening, but nice pins. I see the pins. It has a nice quality feel. Now what am I going to use this for and should you buy it? Should you buy it? If you're into this kind of knife, if you're looking for a fixed blade or outdoors kind of person, I would say definitely. This knife has a lot to offer. It's beautiful. It looks, it, it, it's sharp, is incredibly sharp. And I would say if the if my price is right that I said I paid for it in the 60s or maybe close to $70, that's not too, too bad. I'm sure... Um, fixed knife uh, fans could probably find something you know comparable maybe you debate me and say oh god Joe this is better that's better I don't know I'm more of a folders guy uh, maybe I got maybe a dozen fixed blades maybe a little give or take but well not counting uh, you know parangs and machetes I, I mean granted they're fixed too but I don't count those as a fixed blade they have to me they have their own their own thing but besides that I think yeah what am I gonna use this for I don't know, uh, you know, make a heck of a steak knife, <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, you know, something to keep to your side, something you need to do a quick cut with, you know, I'm not really too big of an outdoors guy, I'm not a guy that's going to go out in the woods and, you know, chop things down and do stuff like that, you know, there's a lot of guys out there, you know, prepare my 101, uh, uh, survival on purpose. Those guys, they love living outside, you know, and I admire them. I wish I could be more like that, but I'm not. But it is a nice knife. And if you're into a market for something like this, consider real steel. And I'm going to be getting that H6 eventually, so I'll be doing a video on that. Very cool looking folder, more up my alley. So stay tuned for that one. That one won't be soon, though. I'll probably have other videos before that. But I just wanted to show you around this one last time. I told you the differences. The main difference being between the 14 and the 15 is the D2 steel. There you go. Nice shot of the D2. So there you have it. Just a quick unboxing. I like it. And I highly recommend it. And it's very sharp and it's very nice to look at and it feels great in the hand. So you can't go wrong. Real steel. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. And I hope you enjoyed the video.